Hey guys, welcome back to Build Something Cool. Today we're gonna talk about four different types of power feeds for your milling machine. The big difference in these is the price. This one here runs at about 125, this one about 350, 750, this one you have to buy them used, I think they run anywhere from 500 to 1,000. We're gonna find out which one is best today. Speed and consistency of speed is what we're really after on a power feed. And if you've got a fly cutter on there, the pattern or the finish is gonna change. We wanna keep that as consistent as possible. Here's the testing procedure we're gonna set up. So we need to find out if this table moves consistently left and right. We wanna find out on the slow speed, left and right. We also wanna find out on the high speed, left and right. We're going to time this for 10 seconds and see how far it moves. And we're gonna know how far it moves because of the DRO. We're gonna take a look at the cheapest power drive. This is the Wing Ding. Wing Ding. Okay guys, I can't make this up. The name of it is Wing Ding. This is the cheapest one that we're gonna look at. It cost me about $100. Uh, there will be a link below, so if you're interested in it. When you hit the handle, it's good and solid. It feels just right. The rapid traverse button feels just fine. But here's one of the shortcomings is I've noticed that when you wanna control the speed, it's just a little slow. You bring it up. You can hear the motor car. But it kind of, after a while, you know what do they say? You wanna turn your amplifier up to 11. Well, this one here stops at more like five, so you can never take advantage of it. They have the wrong potentiometer in there. The fit and finish of this is okay. It's not amazing. This knob is actually plastic, not steel. It's just, it's just not quite right. It's pretty loose. One of the things I do like is this washer. This is a spring washer. Usually what happens, you wanna fit this dial on there. So it's just a little gap right there. And you do that with shims. Well, they do it with a spring washer. And I gotta say, I kinda like the spring washer. And the reason is it gives me just the right amount of tension and I don't have to fight it. Now inside, we do have to put a set of washers in here to gap this because we need to get this gear to fit with this one. I had to do some work to the key to get this to even fit because this was too small for the standard size. I actually had to file on it to make it work. Remember when you turn the dial, this gear interacts with this and this is free flowing until you engage it. So what that means is because this is a little sloppy, when you turn the handle you're engaged and you feel it and it grinds just a little bit more. The other thing is this has stops with it and they're spring loaded, these are plastic, they're not really great. My overall feeling on this is it's okay, it's $100. It's a home machinist, $100 is a great buy. It's time to look at the AL500P. This is made by Workhorse. It's a really great machine. Now I gotta confess, this one is not set up for the X access. X access. X access. X access. X. You know what I'm talking about. It's actually set up for the Y. So I had to do some modifications to make it work in this position. The gear here wouldn't fit, so I had to use the one off the servo. But it still seems to feel nice. When you turn it, it's still pretty good and solid. I like the way that it's set up. This one here has shims to adjust and fit everything together instead of that spring washer. The forward and reverse sounds nice and solid. The speeds are really nice on this. We can, get, we can make it crawl nicely. We can speed it up. And it goes through the whole range of power very nicely. Rapid traverse. I've had some problems with it. Every once in a while, the switch gets, I don't know if it's like a piece of dust in there or something, and gets kinked, and it won't return. Therefore, it's just always running on high speed, so you have to kind of go there and break it in a little bit. On and off is good and solid. The lever is good and solid. And I also have the same one on the Z, so the table goes up and down. And to make these fit, 
you have to put an extension on them to make them work. Well, those extensions weren't built very well and I actually had to make new ones. Uh, they were not concentric to how they were threaded on and they were off just a little bit, you know, five, ten thousandths. But it was too much because the machine would run and go, rrr, 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 rrr. I know, good sound effects, isn't it? So there were some modifications I had to do to make it work. I think it's a little bit louder than the $100 one. Now, I know it's built a little better inside. I'm sure the motor's better. I'm sure this one will last a lot longer. It's now time to look at the servo. This is a servo 140. 140 means for 140 pounds. They have, I think, I wanna say it's a 160 and a 200. So the heavier table is, well, of course, the bigger the servo you need. Also, how fast you want it to move across. Now, this is my personal favorite, and the quality of it is excellent. Now, as you notice, if you look at this a little close, well, it's an old one. Um, I've had it for 10 years. Before that, it was pretty old. I've had it on three, maybe four different milling machines. So, it's been around the block a couple times. It's definitely shown its wear. The gears in here, well, I would say they're getting a little gravelly. They're also straight gears. The Chinese version, the $100 one, actually has conical gears, which makes it, of course, run a little bit smoother. I also like the form factor of this. It's a little bit smaller than the other ones. Now, it does stick out about the same. It's about the same width here, but the form factor here is narrower. The knobs on it, even though I've been using this for 10 years, is still really solid. The on and off switch is down here below, which I don't like. I wish it was up here. Mine has a little sign of wear and I actually need to replace it. Also, for the rapid. Traverse, it works really good. It's supposed to have a sealed switch here and a cover, so I need to order one of those for it. Variable speed is excellent on this. It's just nice and smooth. It's consistent all the way across. The sound of it is nice. It's not like going rrr, rrr, rrr. It's just, it's a solid sound. Just zip it through, zip it back. So I think these are great. The disadvantage to this one is they're about seven, $800 so that you could buy seven of those for the price of one of these. So there is definitely a cost factor there. Another disadvantage is the gears under here are open. And the reason is there's actually supposed to be a cap, but because of the design on this particular one, oils get inside, fills up, and the cap actually falls off. So it's a bad part of the design. I'm sure by now, if you bought a new one, that problem is now fixed, but I've ran across several of these older servos. That cap is missing. A great advantage to these is they're actually made in the United States. I think they still are. At least it's a, it's a U.S. company. Um, I don't know if they're importing them overseas. This one here is the American version. The gearing on this, does not seem to interfere with the handle, so I of course like that. So I like the servo, that's why I've kept this one for so many machines and so many years. So now, let's go take a look at the next one. This is the Bridgeport Model 8F. It's really kind of, what do I want to say, the gold standard. The quality of it is excellent. It's actually amazing. The difference with this one is it actually has a DC motor instead of a servo motor. So what they try to do is to compensate for the inconsistency of the motor, what they do is they run the motor at a high speed and gear it down to where it runs through this gearbox. It has a rapid traverse, simple on and off. It has a variable speed. And also one feature I really do like on this is the handle and the automatic off. So when this goes too far, a switch is hit and it kicks this out of position. A feature of this power feed is this handle. It's free flowing. And the way it actually works is if you put a little twist on this, it actually locks it to rotate. It's kind of a neat feature, but I gotta say at the end of the day, it's a no for me. I don't like it. This is, has the 49 inch table. So when I'm trying to adjust something here and look something very close, it's hard to get to this handle. I'd rather just have a, just a total round one. I actually like what I, I want to handle like this on the end so I can just grab the top of it and adjust those thousands. It's a great feature, especially for an industrial application. And again, that's what this is. This is an industrial machine. This is not something that, what, what I want to say, this thing is designed to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
A disadvantage to it is its size. In some shops, this distance is a big deal. I've been in even smaller shops than this one here. So the other ones are just a little bit shorter, not that much, not that big a deal. Another problem is this is a very heavy machine. A lot of you think, well, who cares? It's a bridge port, it can handle the weight. Well, no, it can't, okay? A table like this, this, like I said, is a 49 inch table, is over time, this table is bending. The other machine that we just looked at, I actually pinged that table straight. It was out 7,000. So if you put a straight edge on it, the center of it was 7,000 higher than the outside. So I pinged the table and that's a process of turning the table upside down and pinging it, hitting it multiple times and stretching the material. So you take the concave and you stretch it and you bring it out straight. Works out really great. I actually, I plan to do it on this table here because I know it has a little bend to it. So the more weight you can put on this, on a table, the bigger disadvantage it is. So now let's go through the whole speed test so you guys can make an informed decision on which one you'd like to get. Here's what the test procedure is gonna look like. We're gonna do the slow first. So I'm gonna make sure that I can get this at a speed that is as slow as it can go, but still interact both directions. We need to zero out the DRO, and then we need to turn on the timer. What I will do is hit the start and the lever at the same time, time it for 10 seconds, eight, nine, 10. And we'll write down this number. And again, what I'm after is consistency. I'll do five left, five right, then we'll do high speed, and we'll also do the rapid traverse. We're gonna also time this out, like I said, at 10 seconds. 20 would be better, but I'd be here for a while. I'll do this whole thing on a time lapse on this machine, and then I'll just show you the data from all of them. The results of the speed test is kind of interesting. And the goal of the speed test was to find out more about consistency than which is the fastest or which is the slowest. This one here, the $120 one, it was the most inconsistent. Left was not the same speed as right. I don't think it's that big a deal, but it does talk about quality. Where the bridge port and the servo they were really consistent. They were within, I think, about five thousandths of each other going from left to right. The slowest one, the average speed was 0 0.034 of an inch over 10 seconds. So that wasn't very far. That was its average speed. The next one was the $350 one. This one it came in at 0 0.040. Next was the bridge port. 0.135 and then the 121 at 0.15. So let's talk about fast. Which one was the fastest? Over 10 seconds, the bridge port could go 6.2 inches. This one is actually in the second place, the $350 one. It went 5.9 inches, 4.20 and 4.10. So speed wise, this one killed it then these two are kind of tied. Now the rapid traverse, this is really important. How fast can you move from point A to point B when you just need to get a cutter into place? That's something I use these for all of the time. The bridge port really kicked it. It went over 10 and a half inches in 10 seconds. So boom, killed it. The $750 one, nine inches, basically six inches and a little less than six inches. So these are kind of tied. So the speed, I don't think that's an issue about which one to buy over how fast it can do the work. Consistency talks about the transmission and how well the motor is wound. This one, these two, these three actually did really well. This one here, a little marginal. Here is my conclusion to buying these. It really comes down to not which is the best, but which is the best for your budget. I would have, to be honest, no problem putting this on my milling machine, but with limitations to realize that I don't know how long it's gonna last. Its consistency was marginal. If it's all I can afford, I think this does great. Next up is this one. For a home machinist, this is a great buy in my opinion. 350 bucks, 
pretty consistent. It's got some quality issues, like I said, especially when the adapters have to fit on the Z for the table to go up and down or for the Y to go back and forth. Had a few quality issues that took a little bit more time to set up. But I think it's a great, great value. I think you'll get a lot of use out of this one. This one here is the Servo. This one here is my personal favorite. If I was a full-time machinist, this is the one I would buy. Okay, if I was on my mill and had to trust it and the consistency, this is the only one I would buy. Next, we have the workhorse at Bridgeport. These are great. It works really, really well. My biggest issue is the form factor. It is large and it is heavy. And I worry about this much weight hanging off the table and bending the table because these tables do over time take that shape. So my conclusion is I don't think you can really go wrong with any of these. I would go to the top of whatever your budget is. If your budget is $120, great. But if you can push it up to the 350, you'll never be sorry that you did. What do they say? Buy once, cry once. So in conclusion, you gotta get one. Just matters on which one do you want. All right guys, till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Hey guys, if you're thinking about buying one of these power drives and you wanna help out the channel, you can click on one of the links below. I get a little bit and you don't get charged for it. All right, till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.